Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Um, we continue this festival of hymn series. Uh, this is one of Carl's favorite hymns, uh, Wake Await. Um, and the text that we're going to be using is from Revelation 22, verse 7. These simple words Jesus said, Behold, I am coming soon. That'll be our text. Pastor once said this about uh, music, just music in general, which I, I found to be an intriguing quote. He said, all worship, all music is worship music because every song is amplifying the value of something. There's a trail of our time, our affections, our devotion, our money, and that trail le leads to a throne, and whatever is on that throne is what we worship. We're all doing a great job of it because God has called us, created us to be worshipers. The problem is, is that a lot of us have really bad gods. There's something about music that can take us to places that we just simply love to go. It doesn't have to be a hymn or a spiritual song. It could just be a guitar strumming all the way back to 1972 and taking you to just a happy place that you just love to be. This is my happy place. I love this song. This is a, a song by the band America and, um, and it starts off simply enough with this word picture of walking down a road, chewing on a piece of grass, right? Simple as that. The song dropped in 1972. I was five years old. I've been listening to this song for 50 years of my life. And every time I hear just that opening lyric, it takes me to a dirt road, walking down a dirt road, green open fields, big blue sky, puffy clouds, and I'm walking with this big overgrown blade of grass. And it doesn't matter where I am when I sing it. I could be stuck in traffic on I-94, or I could be shoveling snow in the middle of J January. When I sing those words, it takes me to a happy place. That's what music can do. Music can take you to places where you love to go. Music can also kind of carry you along with the, the songwriter uh, or the singer through whatever season of life they happen to be in. One of the interesting observations I heard a while back about pop music um, is that some of our favorite singer-songwriters wrote their best music before they were famous. Because there was a grit there. There was a rawness, a longing, an aching that connects with the listener that is often seems to fade away or tends to ring hollow after they become famous. It's an interesting thought. And, and then there's Philip Nikolai. Philip Nikolai was a Lutheran pastor uh, who was born just 10 years after Martin Luther died. Uh, Philip Nikolai is often regarded as one of the great defenders of Lutheran doctrine, Lutheran teaching in the 16th century, mostly as a, a, a writer, a theologian, um, and occasionally as a, as a hymn writer. And we just sang one of his, Wake Awake for Night is Flying. He writes that through a very difficult season of life, in fact, a very brutal season. He writes this hymn as a response to everything that's happening around him in the region of Westphalia, Germany. And this little town where he was a pastor called Una, Una, Germany, not too far from, from Munich. Una, Germany, where he pastored, was home to 2,500 people, lived in Una, Germany. 2,500 people in 1597 when the bubonic plague came through. 1,400 of the 2,500 residents of Una died within six months that year. Nikolai wrote that there was one pain, particularly painful stretch 
where for a period of about 10 days, he was burying 30 people a day, young women, children, but all of them friends. And this, this was one of his ways to work through that. During that stretch, that, that aching stretch, he wrote a commentary. It was one of the ways in which he dealt with this overwhelming grief. He wrote a commentary on one verse of the Bible, Romans 8, verse 18, where Paul writes these words, For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth even comparing to the glory that will be revealed to us. And he wrote 400 pages on what Paul used to describe in one sentence, because this is, this is where he was. The title of that commentary is A Mirror of the Joys of Eternal Life, the joys of eternal life, and this is where he was during this stretch. And he wrote these words of this hymn, Wake, Awake, for Night is Flying, and it's, it's largely based off of the parable of the ten virgins, where only five of the ten, as you remember, were ready when the bridegroom finally came. But it comes at the end with this really stark warning of Jesus. At the end of that parable, Jesus says, but stay awake, be ready, because you don't know when he comes. And this was just such a painful time where, where the bridegroom of heaven, where Jesus just kept coming and coming and coming and taking home so many people. But this hymn, I think, is just this brilliant testimony to those who are ready. In fact, when we sing this hymn, it actually only, we actually only sing about the five who are ready for the bridegroom, the Lamb and His kingdom, to bring us to the wedding feasts of the Lamb, which has no end. This is Phil Nikolai pushing through that grief of such great loss, 30 people a day, burying them, friends, and rejoicing, but rejoicing, choosing to rejoice in this hymn in, quote, those who join with the choir immortal singing hymns of praise. And I think to myself, if, if singing silly songs about nothing in particular, whatever your happy song happens to be, can bring us such joy. What are the hymns of the faithful? What are the hymns of the faith that takes us along with Jesus as we make our way home? There's this one beautiful, easily missed phrase in verse 3 that describes this picture of heaven that, that I wanted to share with you. Let saints and angels sing before thee of one pearl, each shining portal, we're joining with the choir immortal. One shining pearl. And that takes you back to New Year's Eve here at Historic Trinity 2017. As I was preparing for that annual service, I had chosen to preach on Matthew 2.11. And I had written the sermon. I practiced it a few times, but I'm, I'm standing here right in this pulpit. And I'm practicing. It just didn't feel right. I didn't like it. And it just felt like I wasn't supposed to do it, so I, I scrapped it. I did something I never do. I scrapped my sermon the day before I was to preach it, and I went back into my office. I wrote an entirely new run based on a completely different text. The new text that I picked was uh, from Revelation 21.5 in describing a picture of heaven where we hear these words, I am making all things new. So I wrote an entirely new sermon. Meanwhile, during those closing hours on, on New Year's Eve, our dear sister in Christ, Margaret Hollowell, for those of you that remember Margaret, she was in her final hours here on this side of heaven, making her journey home, where she would see him, namely Jesus, specifically alive and gloriously with her own eyes. So. She would breathe her last breath that evening, shortly before midnight. But her last words that evening, her family said, came a few hours before. They said roughly about 7.30 It's the last time she spoke. 
I started my sermon that evening at about 7.25 on Revelation 21.5, this picture of heaven with the words, I'm making all things new. But at about 7.30, Margaret, who had not been lucid for days leading up to this moment, opened up her eyes, blinked a few times, looked up at the ceiling from her bed in the hospital room and said, I see the pearls. Her son said, Mom, what did you say? She said more loudly and more clearly, the pearls. I see the pearls. Her final words. Revelation 21.5, my text that evening, describing a little picture of heaven, said, I'm making all things new. Revelation 21, 21, 16 verses later, gives a picture of heaven with the words, and I quote, and the 12 gates of the holy city were 12 pearls, each one of the gates made of a single pearl. Of one pearl, each shining portal is the same. My job as a preacher is simple in in that I am supposed to share with you the Word as seen through the eyes of God, but it, it, it seems to me that that night, that one glorious night, that as I was preaching the Word, trying to show you through the eyes of God the picture of heaven, that our dear sister in Christ was actually seeing with her own eyes the Word Himself in all of His glory. Philip Nikolai, through the darkness of the worst days the city of Una, Germany has ever seen in their long history, 425 years ago, as he's burying 30 people a day in just a matter of months, chose to sing about what they were seeing, those who were buried in faith. So I thought if there was anything that I could just do today, it would simply be this to show you the pearls of heaven and the resurrected Christ through the eyes of one of his saints who was indeed ready. Amen. May the peace of God which is beyond our understanding guard and keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus to life everlasting. Amen.